Hi, Sikki in India. This is Abhinav, your MC for events and conference design, and I'm here to take a small session on uh, how to sell event for dummies. Uh, first, I decided that I'll do one of those uh, stand near a board and show some paper charts and you know write some things on them and then say something. But I decided why not take uh, some people uh, sit down, have a nice conversation, and hope that you get something out of it. Yeah. So today uh, with me, I have uh, two very special people. Uh, we have your MCVP for NEP, Mr. Abhishek Tatirani. Hi guys, what's si up? Silent claps, please. And then we have your MCVP for ER, Shell Pancholi. No claps, please. Uh, <laughs> so what we are going to do is... Uh, yeah, part is over. My turn. Alright. Um, uh, so Abhinav, uh, before we go and start telling people what events are all about and what event sales are all about, I just had a small basic question to ask you. Uh, why does ISEC do events? I also, okay, so let me uh, answer to, uh, to you in this way. Yeah. I believe there are three reasons why uh, ISEC does events. Uh, the first thing is the kind of brand you have and the kind of uh, image that you want to portray in your market. Mm -hmm. I know there are many LCs doing a lot of other things. Uh, and doing an event creates a kind of a, a brand. If I know that I, ISEC in Navi Mumbai or ISEC in Mumbai is doing SDGs, the market will portray them as that, that they are they are the ones who do something about SDGs. Mm. The second reason I believe that we do events is uh, fundraising. Right. Uh, it always gives us some money uh, to handle some operations, uh, to do some extra things that we want to do with our LC. And the third thing is member experience. Uh, in ISEC, which is a very unique thing that we do, is we make sure that our members go to an experience of de delivering an event. And in a world where events have become a prime uh, activity because it brings a lot of people together. I believe that giving this experience to members uh, is uh, very important at ISEC and yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so whenever I ask someone this question, uh, this is uh, pretty much the answer that I get. Uh, brand image, fundraising and mem member experience. And I believe it's uh, true also. But then something uh, that I've, something, uh, I've been struggling with in the past few days is connecting this with ISEC's actual vision. So, okay, Shell, yeah. let me ask you a question over here. What is ISEC? ISEC is the world's... Okay, um, uh, we strive for peace and fulfillment of humankind's potential through developing competent leaders. Yeah. Uh, and tell me, how does an LC... Uh, or, and imagine that you are a member in an LC in ISEC India. Yeah. yeah? Uh, what does an LC do to reach there? So, we ensure that uh, uh, we are doing... Um, we are sending and getting young people on international exchanges and making sure that they are uh, they are developing these uh, four leadership uh, qualities that you stand well, uh, uh, are LDM qualities. And uh, the role of an LC, I think, is to um, do these exchanges on the ground level and then also to make sure that these, the number and quality of these uh, exchanges increase on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Yeah. So to make sure an LC reaches there, yeah. what do you think? Um, what do you think you, that as a member, yeah. does every day to ensure that happens? Um, as a member, I think my role will be to ensure that I am getting uh, raising enough number of opportunities or people, and then matching them and realizing them, and at the same time ensuring that uh, this number is growing in terms of quantity and uh, the experience that these people are getting uh, that, that, that my stakeholders are getting are, is also top notch and is increasing. So increasing quality and quantity of uh, the exchanges that I do. And how do we increase quality and quality of these exchanges? Um, so by getting more number of stakeholders, I think one of the easiest ways to increase the quality is getting more number of stakeholders on board. And that is exactly why we do events. An event is where we can have all the people that we want come at the same place and that is where we can drive the same message over there. We can ensure that we do all the messaging, all the uh, things that we have in ISEC, the operations, the products that we have, the kind of messages that we do, the kind of vision that we have. If we can get people together and deliver it at the same point of time, it is easy and it is effective. And that is the reason why we do events. Oh. And that is how it is, and that is how we can okay. uh, uh, take ISEC's message and share it across them. So, yeah. Oh, but I mean, okay. I mean, I've been wondering um, when we talk about the vision of ISEC and we talk about everything that we need to do, and ISEC has to support it somehow. From whatever you said, I don't really see how do we do that. Okay, Daddy, uh, answer this. 
what do you think is the vision of ICT? Oh, what is the vision of ICT? We, s we are striving for the peace and fulfillment of humankind potential by creating competent leaders through enabling leadership in whatever experiences we deliver. And uh, what does an LC and a member of an LC uh -huh. do on a day to day basis to reach there? So, I mean, I think it's simple. I mean, we have to do exchanges and we need to uh, do more and more exchanges and we also need to keep in mind that the quality of the exchanges is also good. Uh, by reaching out to probably the right crowd and uh, yeah, I think that, I think something on the those okay. notes. Good. Um, coming from a non-operational non background, you were bang on. Uh, and my next question is, how do we improve uh -huh. the quality and the quantity of the products that we deliver? Okay. Um, Mm, from what I can think, um, from what I can understand, if you want to increase the quantity, obviously, logically, you need to reach out to more people. When you want to increase the quality, you need to reach to the right people who would be able to benefit from the product and uh, mm, probably would add, add value also uh, to ISEC at the same time. So you said two main keywords that I took from you. There are more people and the right people. And this is what we get in an event. An uh -huh. event is a place where the more people and the right people come at the same place and we we deliver a message of what our vision is. Mm -hmm. And now you understand how the vision mm -hmm. of ISEC is somehow makes sense uh, with an event and why right. we do an event, yeah? Do that. So, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, it was a nice uh, banter that we had. Yeah. Uh, what I want to do right now is use your expertise since you mm -hmm. both are, have been in sales backgrounds. I want to understand from you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. So in an event, uh, right. there is uh, two two kinds of objectives. One is an internal objective, and one is an external objective. Definitely. The external objective is definitely telling, uh, definitely the kind of marketing you do, the kind of brand you uh, portray mm. uh, to the network. And the internal objectives uh, involve fundraising, uh, and that is the aspect that I want to talk today. Yeah. Right. That is event sales. Mm -hmm. So and since both of you are have been VPs, BD. Uh, so you guys can help you with that. So Shell, what do you uh, have to say on the entire aspect of event sales? Um, uh, yes, so uh, uh, sales is one of the most uh, important objectives when it comes to uh, event. And uh, I believe there are three things that we need to decide uh, while uh, uh, when we talk about sales for an event. The first one being uh, how much of a priority is it for you to do sales for that event? Second is, if it is a priority, how much money do you get want to get from that event and who do you reach out to? And the third point is, again, if it is a priority, how much cost do you want to cut through sales and who will you reach out for that aspect? So now talking about, the, uh, uh, talking about these things, I'm, I'm, I'm going to elaborate on the, on the first one. So um, uh, to, to exactly know if sales should be a priority or not for your event, I think uh, the, the first thing to consider is the budget of the LC as an overall, how much money uh, is coming in through exchanges and then how much money is being spent. And then the gap, uh, the, the gap defines the income that you need to get from events throughout the year. Now this income has to be divided in events that you're doing across the, uh, uh, across the year based on which event has uh, the most sellable product, which events has maximum number of people attending which event, event has the best, ven most attractive venue uh, and these things. So once you have one, uh, how, uh, one, if your budget actually needs you to raise money from this event in place. Second, um, if you know what kind of uh, what kind of venue you have and what kind of value proposition uh, your event uh, has, you will know if sales is a priority for this event or if something else is a priority for this event. Yeah, like uh, Shell covered, I mean, uh, um, if say if uh, fundraising is really a priority for this particular event, you also need to understand uh, how much is the kind, how, how much money do I really want to raise? How many partnerships do I want to strike? Who are the people that I can approach? Now, there's a simple way of doing this. Um, choose your partners according to your event. I mean, there's nothing more simpler than that. For example, if you are doing something which is immensely sellable, say you are doing the Youth Speak Forum. Now, the kind of partners who ideally should be there in this particular event, uh, should be the people who uh, actually want to do something for the youth, right? Uh, youth speak is where you are going to be talking about SDGs and uh, what are people doing for that. And if a company is aligned to that particular thing, if they are doing something for the youth or for the SDGs, then probably they should be present. Now when you talk about say a Nexus, an event like Nexus, which definitely sells a lot because of the fact that the value proposition is so strong, you can get networking with your BOA, you can get networking with your clients and so on. 
So choose the clients wisely is what I would say. Um, but if Shell said that if fundraising is a priority, so you really need to know that this is the kind of amount of this is the amount of money I need to raise, and your income should always be greater than your expenses. I mean that is the basic of a budget. But how do you make sure that this happens? Is not just by striking partnerships which uh, add uh, value to your event just through revenue, but also by saving money through cost cutting and probably. Cost cutting, yeah, and and this is something that I found very interesting in Isaac India that uh, LCs and even uh, at, at, I've noticed that LCs always run towards uh, raising a lot of money, but there's also a very simpler way to make sure the event happens, and at the same point of time, the resources and the time used gets reduced, and that can be done by cost cutting. And it's it's a very simple concept. You uh, approach companies, the right companies, and if they're not able to give you money, for example, you are taking an example of uh, you speak for. If in a you speak forum that there's a particular beverage and a food and beverage company, an F&B company who's not ready to give money, but they say, okay, come, we'll cool, we'll cover all the food and uh, be beverage uh, uh, aspect of your event. It's sorted. You do mm. not have, you do not. Your OC members will not be running around here and there finding food and beverages for all the delegates because it's already sorted. Yes, it doesn't give you money, but it saves money. Money so, saved is money on. Yeah, and thank you so much for this, guys. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted Isaac India to know, and it's a, uh, it's, it's something that I've been since uh, Shell is my roommate. He keeps talking about it every day, mm -hmm. uh, and he keeps on funnily referring it to the chicken and egg rule, or uh, as we call it in BD terms, the proposal and the venue rule. So Shell, do you want to tell Isaac India about that? Yeah. So what I talk about every day is uh, chicken and egg as food, um, <laughs> but then uh, there's this uh, concept that. Uh, I realized when I was doing events as a VPBD uh, in Isaac and Ahmedabad a few years back uh, was that um, you never know what to uh, get first, whether to make a proposal first or uh, whether to get a venue first. And there's always this question of if I get my, uh, if, uh, only if I get my venue, I can put it in the proposal and then I can make proposal and start selling. But then there's a counter argument of only if I have a proposal, I can go and do a venue partnership. And uh, because of this, something that happened in one of my events was that the entire timeline got delayed by a good two weeks. So just solving the, this problem once and for all, the proposal is something that needs to come first because that is what tells people what your event is all about. And even if you don't have a venue, you can just tell them that these five places can be our tentative venues. But then you have something to go and start getting your uh, attendees for that event, uh, getting your uh, sponsors on board, getting your media partners if you're looking for that whoever you're looking for is going to uh, give you what they are from that proposal so just solving that once and for all uh, thank you Abhinav for bringing that up and yeah okay. uh, or because that was a big revelation for me uh, in when in my LCP term I wasted three months of my time just thinking about whether venue proposal venue proposal and it just the event never happened uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah uh, thank you so much guys for uh, being a part of this uh, interesting discussion that we have. Uh, do you guys have any, have any closing thoughts to give uh, to the viewers of Isaac India? Um, probably I would say that um, when we when somebody thinks about events and especially an Isaac thinks about it, they probably don't think about events in Isaac but they think about it externally and uh, they always go behind the aspect of how do we sell it, how do we market it more and so on. So sometimes I feel uh, that maybe the objectives might be misaligned and they probably don't contribute to the vision of ISIC, which is one of the reasons why we talked about it right now. So uh, the only thing I would suggest to you is that at the end of the day, uh, it should contribute uh, to ISIC as an organization, not just in terms of revenue, but in terms of exchanges. So be very sure about what your internal and external objectives are and have a mechanism through which you can measure if these objectives are being met. That's pretty much from my side. Thank you so much, Abhishek. Sher? Oh, I'm good. Ah, oh, share is good. <laughs> okay, guys. So uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I know that uh, Abhishek and uh, Shell have already covered you the basics of how to sell. So you already know how to do it. Today, what we discussed more was on the kind of mindset you should have when you enter even sales. The kind of preparation should you, uh, you should do. Also, to add on, please have your core teams ready three months before the event and not a month before the event or one and a half because these people need to do the market research and the things that follow with these two have discussed in the previous video. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, sparing your time for, uh, to watch this video. Uh, it was really fun having this conversation with uh, both of you boys. Uh, and uh, before we end, I have a very, very, very important question to ask the both of you. It, it's I very know, important. I know, I know, I know. Who drank the milk today? I really needed it. So I need, need to know. 
Was it you? No, I had it yesterday. I didn't, I didn't touch it today. But Shell was at home today. So I think Shell did it. Yeah.